What's up everyone, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube. We've already busted out our wallets and purchased premium. Now we gotta go through and set it up and manage it. That's coming up. Like I said, we've already purchased premium. You can go and check that out right here. But now we need to manage premium. We need to assign some users, we need to assign some workspaces so that you can take full advantage of what premium has to offer for you. So let's dig in and get to it. To set up our capacity node, we need to go to the admin portal inside of Power BI. So you've already figured out that you are a global admin or a Power BI service administrator, you're in that role. So let's go to the admin portal. We're gonna get there by going to the gear in the upper right and then select admin portal. Inside of the admin portal, we're gonna see a section called premium settings. We can go and select that. And here we see a couple things. One, I've got two P1 nodes that are available to me. One of them's already set up. I can see that it says Contoso P1. The other one says new capacity P1 number one and says to set up the new capacity. So this is a capacity that has a capacity node that hasn't been set up yet. So we need to go through that process. When you first purchase a premium node, it's gonna look like this. It's not available to use with workspaces, hasn't been configured yet. So we need to select set up new capacity. When you do that, you need to give it a name. The other node I have is Contoso. Let's go ahead and call this one sales. So you can also select additional capacity admins. These admins do not need to be a global admin or a Power BI service administrator. They can just be admins of this capacity. And you can do this later on if you want. So let's go ahead and hit set up and we'll come back to that. After you configure your capacity node, this is the screen you're going to see. I don't have any workspaces assigned to it, so I have the option to assign workspaces. We'll come back to that. The other thing you'll note is that I just called this sales. The other one, I had a P1 designation next to it. Just a little visual clue to let me know what size or SKU it is, just from a, from a listing perspective. Let's go back. We can hit settings up top here, and I can change the name for this capacity. So let's call it sales P1. The other thing you can see down below is the region that this capacity node is in. So it's in West US. So that's interesting. The other thing you'll see service admins, these are everyone that is a global admin or a Power BI service administrator with inside of your tenant. They're gonna show up by default because they are admins by default. So let's go ahead and hit apply. And if we, let's go back out and we'll come back in, you'll see it says P1 now. I can get back to that initial setup screen by just selecting the name. And here we can see we've got user permissions. We've got capacity admins and we've got users with assignment permissions. I mentioned before that there's more than one way to assign a capacity admin. We can select that here, or expand that, and then we can add those users. So let me go ahead and add one and we'll go ahead and hit apply. And now we have another capacity admin that is not, this user is not a global admin or a Power BI service administrator. So we can collapse that. Now we can assign people that have assignment permissions but don't have admin permissions. And so this means that they can select whether or not a work group goes into a capacity or not. We can do this for a security group, we can do it for the entire organization, or we can do it for specific users. Okay, so let's add a user for just assignment permissions. So we'll choose my friend Anakin, and we'll apply that. So now we've established a capacity admin that's not a global admin or a Power BI admin, and we've set up a user with assignment permissions. The other thing we can do here is we can assign workspaces to this capacity from the capacity admin screen. When we go and select assign workspaces, we can choose to do the entire organization's workspaces or specific users. And when we put in their email address, what this will do is it'll assign their workspaces that they are admins of. So app workspaces that they're an admin of, as well as their personal My Workspace. I'm not gonna do that here because I wanna show you where else we can do this. This is how we do it through the admin portal. But let's switch over to the user that is listed as a capacity admin. I wanna show you what that looks like. So Michael Bison is the one that we set up as the admin for the capacity. This user is not a Power BI admin or a global admin. But what we will do is go up to the gear in the upper right, we will go down to admin portal, and what you'll notice is they only see premium settings. And they will only see 
the premium capacity nodes that they are listed as a capacity admin for. And so we can see that they only have access to sales P1. They did not have access to Contoso P1. So this is very limited in terms of what they can do. And at this point, they can go in and they can configure this capacity as they need. They can assign workspaces. They can do all of that. So we can see the Star Wars item. So we can edit this workspace. They are listed as an admin. Let's go ahead and list Anakin while we're here. Just want to show you that as well. And here under advanced, you'll notice that they do not have the option to move this workspace to premium because this user, Michael Bison, is only listed as a capacity admin. In order to flip the switch here and do it from an app workspace, they have to be listed as uh, an assignment person. So they, they have to be listed as someone that has the rights to assign workspaces to that capacity. Now, this user, because they're an admin, they could go to the admin portal and change over workspaces there. They cannot do it from the actual edit workspace screen unless they have assignment permissions. So let's switch over to Anakin and see what they can do. We are now under Anakin Skywalker and we are in the Star Wars 7 app workspace. And if we go to the app workspace settings, we'll go to edit workspace. So this user is not a global admin. It's not a Power BI service administrator and they are not listed as a capacity admin for this capacity node. All this user has is assignment permissions for the sales P1 capacity. Now, what we can do is go to edit workspace and we'll see that the user has to be an admin of the workspace in order to see the advanced settings and they have to be a user with assignment permissions. So if we expand advanced, we can now see that premium is lit up and I can say, yep, turn it on. And then I can choose the capacity node that I have access to. So if I hit sales one and then I hit save, that's it. This app workspace is now part of a premium capacity. So let's switch back over to my account. We'll go back to the admin portal, go back to premium settings and we'll see sales P1 now. Let's go back into that. And now we see that the workspace is listed here, my Star Wars 7 workspace, because Anakin assigned it in there. Maybe he used a little bit of the dark side. I don't know. But we can also see stats that are available. Are we within range of what this capacity node can do? Everything's green. We're good to go. You can check out the documentation for details around those usage statistics. Let me know down in the comments if you want me to go in more detail on that and we can maybe look at that. But you can also just hit learn more about usage measurements. It will send you over to the documentation where you can find out more info. This app workspace is now part of premium capacity. Your individual My Workspaces can also be part of premium capacity if you want. There are benefits to having that there from an individual user perspective in terms of the limits that you can do. So if I have, say, a data set in My Workspace, and I want to refresh that more than eight times a day, sticking that in premium capacity will allow me to do that. From this workspace now, I can go ahead and embed items. I can go ahead and take advantage of all that premium has to offer for me. Later on down the road, I could decide to move this out of the premium capacity, or I can move it to a different premium capacity. So that's always an option for me. Okay, let me know what your thoughts are. If you have any other questions about managing premium capacity nodes, anything at all, go ahead and leave that down in the comments below and let me know. If you like this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below for more great content from both Patrick and myself. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and I'll see you in the next video.